For this section we are dealing with tangent lines, specifically with how they relate to circles. It also brings us to new ways to use the word tangent. Clearly we have used the word tangent before when we dealt with trigonometry. At that point we defined it as the ratio of the length of the opposite side to an angle over the length of the adjacent side to that same angle. That was lovely. But we aren't using that meaning for tangent in this section. There are actually a bunch of different meanings for tangent, more than I have listed here, and many of them have to do with math. You'll have to get used to using tangent in many different ways in many different contexts as you progress through your math career. I know you're looking forward to it. Of the ones I have listed here, you can see a theme. Tangent is when two things are touching. More specifically, we want things touching but not overlapping. Sometimes that touching involves a whole surface, like the bottom of a can in definition 3. But for this lesson, we want to focus on number 2 and number 5. Instead of opposite over adjacent, we want to think about a line that touches at a single point as a curve to a surface. So with that in mind, we want to think about tangents as they apply to circles. Here is our circle. A tangent line would be one that touches that circle at a single point. All of these lines are examples of tangent lines. A point of tangency is exactly what it sounds like. It is the point where the tangent line touches the circle. For these tangent lines, these would be the points of tangency. Easy, right? A tangent segment is a line segment which is part of a tangent line with one endpoint as a point of tangency. All of these are examples of tangent segments. It doesn't matter which endpoint is the point of tangency, but one of them has to be. There is also this part of the definition which says the tangent segments must be part of a tangent line, and all of these line segments are part of tangent lines. The reason for that part of the definition is so that this guy gets disqualified. This purple line segment is not a tangent segment, since it is not part of a tangent line. These are the only tangent segments. All are part of a tangent line. All of them have one endpoint as a point of tangency. If you understood that, then tangent ray is almost the same thing. Like a tangent segment, a tangent ray is part of the tangent line. There is only one endpoint with a ray, and it has to be the point of tangency. All of these are examples of tangent rays. Since a tangent ray is required to be part of a tangent line, this one is not a tangent ray. It works just like the tangent segment. On this page, you can see a circle that has had four different possible tangent lines drawn to it. A radius in each circle has been drawn to the point of tangency. What do you notice seems to be true about the tangent line and the radius in each example? If you look at it long enough, you should see that they are all perpendicular. That is what this theorem says. If you have a tangent line, like the red one here, then you know it is perpendicular to that radius drawn to the point of tangency exactly what you should have noticed on the previous slide. I titled this one the converse, but in truth it isn't exactly if q then p, so it isn't quite the converse, but it is pretty close, and is definitely the spirit of the converse. We basically have the same situation, but now instead of knowing it is a tangent line, you see that it is perpendicular. This theorem, which isn't quite a converse, says that if you know it is perpendicular, then you know it must be a tangent line. Another example, where the official wording of the theorem makes it seem harder than it really is. It is just the same idea as the first theorem, flipped around. It is a common math question for this section to have you actually construct one of these tangent lines to a circle. In order to do that, we are going to use the fact that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. I'll walk you through that construction now. The first step to this construction is to draw a line from the center of the circle and through the point that we are going through. But when you do it, you don't stop at that point. Keep going. We don't want to stop at P. You need to go past that point for a bit so we have some room to work. At this point we need to draw a perpendicular that goes through P. Think back. This is exactly the same construction as when you were asked to construct a perpendicular to a line that went through a specific point. Do you remember how to do that? How do I get a perpendicular to go through a specific point on a line? The first step is you open your compass to some comfortable size. With the size of your compass chosen, you need to make two evenly spaced points around point P. From here we're going to disregard the rest of the line segment and work on just this part. We want the perpendicular bisector that goes through this line segment and it should go right through P perpendicular which is what we need. So to do that open up your compass to about three quarters of the length of this line segment and make two very big arcs. With those arcs created we want to draw a line through the points of intersection. This will be perpendicular, and since that is perpendicular, we know from that last theorem that that must be the tangent line, and that's what we were supposed to do. Now instead of a point on the edge of the circle, let's consider what happens when we have a point outside of the circle. Here I have a point and a circle. From this point, it is possible to draw two tangent segments to the circle, one coming from the top of the circle, and one coming from the bottom of the circle. In fact, that's true of any point outside of a circle. Here are two more points outside of the circle. 
From each of these points, it is possible to draw two tangent segments to the circle. What do you notice about each pair of tangent segments from each point? What looks to be true? You should be able to see that in every case, the pair of tangent segments are congruent. This is always true and brings us to this theorem that details this effect. This is another common construction that you will find in this section. It constructs two tangent segments from a point outside the circle. The other construction we did, you could probably puzzle out as it was simply making a perpendicular through a point on a line. But this one is a bit more complex. I won't go over the particulars for why it works. Just get the steps down and you should be able to get this one down too. In the last construction we had a point that was on the edge of the circle. This one's outside. It works a little bit differently. In the last construction we drew a line that went to P and then went past it. But that's not what we're going to do here. Now all we're going to do is play connect the dots and connect the center of the circle with our point P. That is the line segment that we need. I need to find the midpoint of this line segment. So how am I going to find the midpoint of the line segment? I'm going to do the perpendicular bisector. So open up your compass to about three quarters the length of your line segment. And again, make two very large arcs. With those arcs made, now I need to connect up the points of intersection. And even though this is a perpendicular bisector, I don't really need the perpendicular part. All I care about is that I found the midpoint of our line segment. Since it's a perpendicular bisector, each half is congruent. This midpoint is the center of a new circle. The radius of that circle is this length here. Or if you want to do this, you can do that too, they'll be the same. Now you can draw the full circle around this whole thing. Some people will like to do that, especially when they want to show off their compass skills. But all we need is where this new circle intersects my original circle. So that's the only part of the circle that I need. These two points of intersection are the important bits. Those are actually my points of tangency to my two line segments. Now students often mess up the very last step to this construction. I do want to make two tangents that go to these points of tangency, but I can't tell you how many people will make it from here. That's not correct. The question started off with us going from P. So this is where you need to start drawing from, not the midpoint we found. So make sure you do that. Make sure you go from point P but then you draw in your tangent segments from that point and that is our construction.